Okay, so nitroglycerin in severe aortic stenosis. Traditionally, that's been a big uh, red flag, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. The classic concern, the one we all learned, is about dropping the blood pressure. Right, because the aortic valve is so narrow, the heart's working hard already. It can't just pump harder if the pressure falls. Exactly. It doesn't have that reserve capacity when the valve is severely stenotic. But, you know, some newer research is making us question that absolute prohibition, especially when a patient presents with acute pulmonary edema. Mm -hmm. That specific situation, fluid overload, high filling pressures, it might change the equation a bit. So let's get into whether nitroglycerin is truly always off limits in these specific uh, critical care cases. Well, the historical reason makes sense physiologically. Nitroglycerin is a vasodilator. It reduces preload, right? The amount of blood filling the heart. Correct. And it also reduces afterload, the resistance the heart pumps against. But in severe aortic stenosis, that drop in preload, that could be the problem. That's the worry. Less filling could lead to a significant fall in cardiac output and blood pressure, potentially even reducing blood flow to the heart muscle itself. So, okay, there was a study that looked at this directly. They reviewed, I think, 195 episodes of acute pulmonary edema. That's right. And they split them into three groups. 65 patients had severe aortic stenosis. Okay. Another 65 had moderate aortic stenosis. And the last 65. No aortic stenosis. They served as the control group. Got it. And how was the nitroglycerin given in this study population? Mostly intravenous. That was used in 70% of the cases. Okay, the majority. Then about 25% received both intravenous and sublingual nitroglycerin. And the remainder? Just a small fraction, 5%, got only sublingual nitroglycerin. So the main thing they were watching for, mm. the primary outcome, was what they called clinically relevant hypotension. Yeah, and that wasn't just any small dip in pressure. No, this meant hypotension serious enough that the clinical team had to intervene. Right. So things like having to stop the nitroglycerin infusion. Or give intravenous fluids. Use vasopressors to bring the pressure back up. Or even, in the most severe cases, cardiac arrest was included in that definition. Exactly. A serious outcome. So what did they find? Was there a big difference between the groups? Well, this is the interesting part. For that primary outcome, clinically relevant hypotension, there was no statistically significant difference. Really? Between the aortic stenosis groups and the control group? Correct. When they combined the moderate and severe aortic stenosis patients, the rate was 26.2%. Okay, about one in four. And in the group with no aortic stenosis, it was 23.1%. Wow. That's surprisingly close. Not what the traditional teaching would suggest. Not at all. It certainly makes you pause and think. Did they look at anything else? Like maybe less severe, but more prolonged low blood pressure. They did. They had a secondary outcome defined as sustained hypotension. Which they defined as? Systolic blood pressure dropping below 90 millimeters of mercury and staying there for at least 30 minutes. Okay, a more sustained drop. What about that? Here, there was a trend. Sustained hypotension happened more often in the severe aortic stenosis group, 29.2% of them. Almost 30%. And the others? It was lower. 16.9% in the moderate aortic stenosis group, and 13.8% in those without aortic stenosis. So higher in the severe group, but was that difference statistically significant? It trended higher, but importantly, after they adjusted for other factors, that difference was not statistically significant. Ah, uh, okay. So they did a multivariable analysis, accounting for other things that might influence blood pressure. Yes, exactly. They adjusted for potential confounders, things like the patient's sex, their initial systolic blood pressure reading. Makes sense. The dose of furosemide they received, which also affects fluid status and pressure. Right. And whether they required non-invasive ventilation, like BiPAP or CPAP. And after controlling for all of that... After all those adjustments, neither moderate nor severe aortic stenosis was found to be independently associated with a higher risk of clinically relevant hypotension after getting nitroglycerin. And the odds ratios. The adjusted odds ratios were hovering right around one. Which basically means no significant link. Pretty much, yes. In this analysis, having moderate or severe aortic stenosis didn't by itself significantly increase the odds of that primary outcome. So what does this mean for clinical practice? Does it mean we should just start using nitroglycerin freely? Well, not freely, perhaps, but it strongly suggests that cautious use with careful titration might be considered, even in patients with moderate or severe aortic stenosis presenting with acute pulmonary edema. 
The key word there seems to be cautious. Absolutely. This isn't a green light to be reckless. It implies that a carefully managed approach is potentially safe. Which brings us to monitoring. That must be absolutely critical here. Essential. If you do decide to use nitroglycerin in these patients, you need very close hemodynamic monitoring. Continuous blood pressure monitoring, ideally. You have to be ready to react quickly if the pressure starts to fall significantly. Precisely. Catching and managing any potential drop promptly is paramount. We should also probably mention the study's limitations, right? Of course. It's important context. This was a retrospective study looking back at records that always has inherent limitations compared to a prospective trial. Right, you're limited by the data that was recorded. Exactly. And while 195 episodes isn't tiny, it's still a relatively modest sample size, especially when broken down into three groups. So more research would definitely be helpful to confirm these findings. D definitely. Larger, perhaps prospective studies would add much more certainty. Okay, so wrapping this up, that traditional teaching the absolute contraindication for nitroglycerin in severe aortic stenosis. This evidence suggests it might be too simplistic, at least in the specific context of acute pulmonary edema. Cautious, monitored use might not actually increase the risk of that clinically relevant hypotension significantly. The real focus needs to be on how it's used. Careful titration, avoiding rapid preload reduction, and vigilant monitoring seem to be the keys. It gives us a much more nuanced perspective for managing what can be a really challenging clinical scenario. You know, balancing the need to offload the heart in pulmonary edema against the risk of hypotension in aortic stenosis. It certainly does. It prompts you to think, how might this evidence change the way you approach your next patient with aortic stenosis and acute pulmonary edema? Yeah. What other factors beyond just the aortic stenosis severity will you weigh when making that critical decision at the bedside? Things to consider.